So let's talk about um, children, um, growth and development, damage, osteochondrosis. What's your take on all that? Class two mandibles. Well, what do you think? I have a challenge to anyone who is watching this video. Yeah. The next 10 patient with class two, do an MRI and send to me. And let's talk about class two. I almost don't believe anymore in class two. Why? Because most of this case has damaged joint, mm -hmm. either because the joint didn't grow mm -hmm. correctly because of some uh, trauma in the, the, the yep. early years, or because of autoimmune process going on. Some may say, okay, but the father he has a small jaw, the mother has a small jaw, this is a family issue. Uh -huh. I agree, it may be. Maybe. It may or, be. Or the family has an autoimmune background. And, and all describe the what that can do. people from that family is have the same problem with the growth of the condyle in the mandible. So once the condyle is one of the most important growth center in the mandible. Mm -hmm. So most of the case, the class two patients are actually pathological yeah. damage joint patients. Yeah. I'm not saying that all of them are, but if somebody disagree, do Take up the challenge, get the next 10 patients, do an MRI, send to me, and we will talk. So I, as a parent, would not allow an orthodontist or oral surgeon to work on my child if they had a class two without an MRI, because I almost always see displaced discs when they have a class two bite. I don't care what their age is, because yes. I happen to look with the MRI, as do you. And when there is no, and there's not displaced disc, you can see very thin discs mm -hmm. with very small condyles or condyles. Resultant of contusion or resultant of, could be biomechanical. Could be biomechanical, could be trauma, it could be right. autoimmune process. We're not talking necessarily about talking about autoimmune disease. The yeah. disease is when, is when the autoimmune attack uh, achieves a level that can be recognized as a specific disease, right. such as uh, uh, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis but much before that and mm, since autoimmune conditions are uh, in the gray scale you have in the black and the white you have the black you have the disease and the white or no disease but there are lots of gray shades of autoimmune process between them and in many cases what you see is TMJ where the this condyle which is a growth center has been damaged and cannot catch up the the growth of the rest of the body. Yep. And this is very easy to see in a EMG in a uh, MRI. MRI. Yeah, the growth actually, center. Actually, actually, EMG, because this patient usually has a lower force on their masseters and their temporalis during clenching. Because they can't generate as much force because you don't have the main is not the right position. Right. The muscle follows its genetics in terms of uh, length. length. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the bone is not catching up with this length. So even if the, the mandible doesn't grow to full genetic potential, the muscle, like the master, the medial pterygoid, the temporalis, they will grow to full they genetic They will grow. Potential. That's why they are a very nice reference. And this is why we not have to take the teeth as reference to diagnose in this moment. Because the teeth and the bones are affected by the same problem. Right. And the coronoid process where the temporalis attaches, that, that will probably grow relatively normally, won't it? Probably. Or it might be a little out of, out of whack. You might be a little more prone to a There'll temporal tendonitis, wouldn't you? Probably have some some angle direction distinction, but yeah. the, 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 the growth is correctly. Yeah. But this is the point. The muscle uh, may be affected during growing. They, we are talking about phenotype and genotype, right? Mm -hmm. The genotype and the phenotype of the muscle uh, and the bones are differently affected by environment. Right. It's very easy to the environment and interfere with the condyle and the the mandible itself. So to be clear, but for the muscle, you should have cut the muscle to have a fibrosis, so it mm -hmm. won't be the, the the length it should be. Gotcha, gotcha. So to be clear, the downwards and forwards growth center of the mandible is between cart the disc itself and the condylar head. Disrupt that environment and one has an osteochondrosis. 
Yes. In the growing you child. Don't, you don't even need to have a complete osteochondrosis to have this uh, center. Uh, Damaged. Uh, a contusion smaller than the, the correct one. A contusion the, just the keeping the disc in place that can also cause you, that. Can you can not? have. You can still have the disc in place. You yeah. can have still the the cartilage over the the condyle head, yeah. but if you have an autoimmune disease, the body is trying to make that thing grow uh -huh. growth, and the autoimmune process is taking it out. So yeah. it slows down the process of growth. So even the other parts of the body is growing, yeah. that part has a slower because rate of Because it's growing. keying in on certain types of collagen? Because, of course, there are mm -hmm. different types of collagen and uh, lots of... And some, uh, some, something different in knee versus TMJ versus shoulder? Yeah. What right? is the, the most common odontologic feature in patients with juvenile rheumatoid arthritis? Open mites. Ah, right. Open mites. Of course. It's the first thing that appears. And sometimes it's not a big upper bite, upper bite if you catch it early. Yeah. And everybody thinks it is the tongue, the thumb, the... Yeah. the, the Sucking the, on the tongue. Yeah, got you tongue thrust. And many times it is an early juvenile aromatoid arthritis. And guess what? Many of these cases uh, remit spontaneously. So yeah. sometimes the, the little boy, the little girl, Got it, suffer from it, then over it's when they are 14, probably the, the rheumatoid has remitted. A remission and they grow back to normal. They go or, or close. Almost, right. Had no diagnosis, no one knew it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was that. But if you see the sagittal x-ray of the face, you're going to see very open angle mm -hmm. of the mandible. Steve Mandel replied. The classical divergent face. Yep. Just like mine. <laughs> yeah, I understand. I'm not, I'm, mine is treated. <laughs> it's yeah. a bit more. But long face, narrow nose. Why? Because the first uh, in, in probably most important growth center in the mandible was slowed down for a while. Right. So you, you, in, in this process, you became a mouth breather then you're going to have a lot of uh, issue on the throat mm -hmm. <laughs> and everything this is just cycle there not good not good so bottom line retreated chin anterior open bite worry about either a biomechanical issue with displaced discs or as a professional uh, as we are professional uh, 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 on healthcare, we must think on the worst first. Yeah. If we discard it, if we exclude the worst, okay, let's deal with the other stuff. So, if a, 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 child, a child comes by to the office and has an open bite, the first thing we must think of yeah. is a juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. Then, if we exclude this, okay, maybe just a, a TMJ lesion for other cause. Okay, if it's not this, okay, maybe it's the thumb, maybe it's the tongue, maybe it's other stuff. Maybe it's genetic. Maybe genetic. Because there are an occasion. Why this approach? Because if you do the opposite, you can do a Which harm. would be assuming genetic is the reason. You can do a harm to the patient. Yes. Lifelong. You, lifelong. Leading to sleep apnea, for example. Yeah. yeah. And first, do not harm. Stay do no harm. Measured matters. Measured matters. <laughs>